How do you prepare for a New Zealand holiday and avoid challenges popping up right from the beginning? From getting the right New Zealand travel visa to the best payment options are so easy to miss. In this video, I'll go through a New Zealand travel planning checklist with my top 10 most important things to know about before going to New Zealand. Plus, I have a couple of insider tips which could save you hundreds of dollars with your New Zealand trip planning. My name is Michael. Let's get started. Number one, New Zealand travel visa and visitor conservation levy. With the exception of Australian passport holders, all travelers to New Zealand require a visa or an ETA, Electronic Travel Authority. Also make sure your passport is current and at least valid for three months after your departure from New Zealand. If you fail to do this, the airline will not let you onto the flight. In my job as a travel designer, I have seen some travelers miss this important part of the travel preparation process. It can be devastating. There are a number of entry visa categories. A. Travelers from visa waiver countries must obtain an ETA before traveling to New Zealand. Most ETA applications are processed online through the official New Zealand immigration website or via a mobile phone app. There's a fee for the ETA, which can be paid online during the application process. The ETA is valid for up to two years. An international visitor conservation and tourism levy may also apply. This is done at the same time as the ETA. For citizens of non visa waiver countries, they will need to obtain a visitor visa rather than ETA. This application process may take weeks, so you need to apply a few months ahead of arrival, especially when traveling in peak times such as Christmas or New Year. Travelers in transit through New Zealand to another destination must also have an ETA. Check the official New Zealand immigration website for the most up-to-date information and ensure you have all the necessary documents before you start your trip. I'll put some links in the description box below for you to check out. If you find this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button below to stay in touch for more helpful New Zealand travel videos to come. Also, you can download my free New Zealand travel planning sheet in the description box below. This will help you greatly with setting up your New Zealand holiday. Number two, travel insurance. Travel insurance is really essential for any trip and New Zealand is no exception. Travel insurance is able to cover unexpected medical expenses, trip cancellation, lost luggage and other unforeseeable events. Make sure your travel insurance policy is comprehensive and covers all activities you plan to undertake. If you're planning on engaging in adventure sports like bungee jump, skiing or skydiving, make sure your policy includes those activities. You don't want to be faced with a massive medical bill. Number three, driving in New Zealand. Renting a car or motorhome can be a great way to explore the country at your own pace. If you plan to drive, remember that in New Zealand we drive on the left-hand side of the road. This is good to know as the roads can be narrow and windy, especially in the rural areas. Some of you will be pleased to know that all rental cars will come with automatic transmission. Sometimes confusion arises with the windscreen wiper and the direction indicator, as they are on the other way around here in New Zealand. My key advice, do not drive immediately after a long haul flight. Take a taxi to your first hotel and get a good night's rest before heading on the road. Always drive carefully and stick to the speed limits, which is generally either 80 kilometers, 100 kilometers outside the cities or 50 kilometers inside the cities. Important to know, your driving license must be valid and in English language. If your national license is not written in English, you will need an international license, which is basically a translation. Otherwise, there are officially approved translation services in New Zealand, which can issue those documents. The cost is generally from $60 New Zealand, depending on how urgent you need it. Number four, weather and seasons. New Zealand weather and seasons are diverse and shaped by its ge geographical location in the Southern Hemisphere. We have four distinct seasons. Summer season between December and February, autumn between March and May, 
winter between June and August and spring from September to November. If you want to learn more about the seasons, I have another video on that. Check in the description box below. I also will link it up here. When you click on the video, you learn about what clothing to take and how to prepare it for those weather conditions. The North Island is generally milder, has milder temperatures year round, while the South Island has more pronounced seasonal variations and alpine conditions, cooler temperatures and snow in the winter. Rainfall patterns vary across regions and this contributes to some of the lush landscapes and unique ecosystems that New Zealand enjoys. Overall, the most stable weather conditions are between January and May. Personally, I prefer the months of March and April going out for outdoor activities. Number five, currency and costs. The currency in New Zealand is the New Zealand dollar. In New Zealand, you normally pay for goods and services with credit or debit card or payment or with a mobile payment app. Most businesses accept major credit cards like Visa and MasterCard and contactless payments are widely used. ATMs are available for cash withdrawals. Cash is still accepted, but Overall, most New Zealanders will have not have much cash in their wallets. Also, banks don't convert foreign notes into New Zealand dollar any longer. Overall, New Zealand can be regarded as less affordable for those on a tight budget, especially when it comes to dining out or accommodation. All charges will include the New Zealand GST tax, which is currently 15%. Note, there are no other taxes you would have to pay when shopping or paying for accommodation or tours. Insider tip, if you want to avoid costly overseas conversion charges by your home country bank, then consider using a credit debit card with a fintech provider such as WISE. This will enable you to save on bank exchange rate conversion charges and you'll also be able to exchange from your local currency into New Zealand dollars at a time when there is a favorable exchange rate. See a link in the description box below. Number six, food dining tipping. The New Zealand food scene is diverse. Don't miss out on trying local favorites like fish and chip, meat pies, or some famous kiwi burgers. Note when it comes to coffee, New Zealand is world class. In fact, we are known for our great coffee and wine culture. You are not obliged or expected to tip when dining out. Compared to other countries, New Zealand does not have a strong tipping culture. Most restaurants and coffees include service charges with your bill. Leaving a tip is seen as a gesture of appreciation rather than necessity. If you do wish to tip for exceptional service, that's up to you. If you have any questions, please put them into the comments box below and I'm happy to answer those. Number seven, clothing and dress code. New Zealand has a relaxed and casual dress code. Comfortable casual clothing is suitable for most occasions. However, if you plan to dine at an upscale restaurant or attend a formal event, please pack some smart outfits as well. Due to variable weather conditions, layer of clothing is key. Bring a waterproof jacket, warm layers, sturdy footwear, especially if you plan to explore the outdoors. Don't forget your swimwear for those beautiful beaches and hot springs. Most accommodation providers will have laundry facilities available for guests. You either pay a few dollars for washing powder or the use of the machine and the dryer. You can also opt to pay at the hotel for their laundry service. Insider tip, you can purchase excellent outdoor equipment and clothing in New Zealand at affordable prices. Outdoor shop chains such as Kathmandu or Magpac have a very good reputation. Number eight, connectivity. While most of New Zealand has an overall good internet coverage in urban areas, rural locations do have limited connectivity. So consider purchasing a local SIM card. I got a link to Spark and Z in the box below. There are also plenty of free Wi-Fi hotspots in urban areas. Thankfully, almost all accommodation providers offer complimentary Wi-Fi connections for their guests. Be aware that in many outdoor regions and national parks, you will not have mobile phone reception. For expedition-style excursions, it pays 
to rent an emergency beacon. Number nine, pre-book nature tours and accommodation. During the peak New Zealand holiday summer season between November and April, nature-based tours such as penguin watch or dolphin swim need to be pre-booked. The same goes for other popular highlights such as Hobbiton Village Tour. So don't miss out on exploring those unforgettable experiences. Some regions have a very limited number of accommodation options available during those peak summer months. Again, plan ahead. You won't be able just to turn up and expect a bed for the night. The same applies for motorhomes. Camping sites are booked up fast. Number 10, traveling with small children. If you're planning traveling with small children or infants in a rental car or in a motorhome, please be aware that by law, all children under the age of seven years must be in an approved car seat. You will need to advise the rental car provider or motorhome provider way ahead of vehicle pickup, preferably when you make the reservation. There are only limited numbers of seats available. Otherwise, bring your own child or infant seat with you. New Zealand has family-friendly accommodation options such as motels, holiday parks, or self-contained units or apartments with kitchen facilities. There are plenty of kids-friendly tours such as Hobbiton, Wildlife Park, and Easy Walks as well. There are even white water rafting operators throughout the country that cater for families. Many attractions offer activities tailored for young children, ensuring everybody has some fun. Again, you can download my free New Zealand planning sheet in the description box below. This will help you greatly when setting up your New Zealand holiday. Here we are. These are my top 10 important things to know before arriving in New Zealand. I hope these travel tips will help you have an unforgettable holiday experience. If you want to read more about weather conditions and clothing, check out this video you up here. If you find this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button below. Thumbs up to stay connected for more helpful New Zealand travel tips. See you in the next video.